So, hello, everyone. Oh, I always forget about that. Um, as the announcement just said, this, this is being recorded. Uh, this session is being recorded. Um, the uh, it is a webinar, so uh, all participants are anonymous, or you, you know, you're not featured in, in any of the recording or anything like that. So it is just for the purpose of recording the speakers. Uh, so please don't worry about uh, any of that. Um, but yeah, so hello, my name is Tilly Smith. I'm the campaign support officer at Generation Rent. I will be chairing this session, uh, which is on um, all about older private renters. Uh, so if that's where you are intending to be this evening, that is you are in the right place. Um, so I'm joined by two brilliant speakers today. We have Fran Graham from uh, the uh, from Independent Age. He's going to be giving us uh, a wonderful presentation uh, in just a short while. Uh, and we're also joined by Holly Holder from uh, Aging Better. We had uh, originally uh, planned to have um, Nazia Azad uh, join us, but unfortunately she's had to be called away at last minute. So Holly is uh, has very nobly jumped in at the last minute to, to help us out. So um, extra thank you for her for doing that. Um, so just just a bit of housekeeping before we go. As I've already said, we are recording. Um, if everyone... Uh, there will be a Q&A section, uh, both after Holly's uh, initial presentation and then at the end. Uh, if everyone, if you have a question, uh, you can at any time uh, ask it by using the Q&A uh, function, which should be at the bottom of your screens. Uh, so if you could just field any questions that you've got to, to there rather than to the chat, it just means that it'll pop up on our screens immediately and we'll be able to see uh, your questions and we'll be able to answer a lot, a lot more easily. Uh, so please do use that function to ask uh, questions and you can do so anonymously as well anonymously as well uh, if you prefer to do it that way. So without further ado uh, we're going to kick off with our first presentation which is by Holly Holder. Oh it's a bit hard of hearing you. apparently. I'm going to take my thing out and then that might be better. Sorry Holly. That is okay. I am just waiting for, there we go, I will just put my presentation up. And go to okay. Can everybody see that? Yes, great. I um, am going to turn my video off. I'm sorry. I just the internet is playing up here. So, um, I am Holly Holder. Thank you so much for that introduction, Tilly. Um. I am the Deputy Director for Homes at the Centre for Ageing Better, and I hope to do Nazia proud um, with my version of her presentation. Thank you so much for the invitation. This is such an important um, uh, event, and we're delighted to be here. Just to give you a little bit of background, the Centre for Ageing Better, sorry, just, sorry, the Centre for Ageing Better is a, uh, a charitable foundation that's funded by the National Lottery Community Fund. We are also part of the government's What Work network, which means that we make recommendations about policy nationally and locally, which is all supposed to be based in evidence. Um, and we're all about making sure that everybody has a good later life. So we do a lot of work thinking about people who are approaching later life and those who are in later life and my team work on housing because we think everybody has the right to live in a safe and warm home as they age. So the first thing I'm going to talk to you about is the growth of the private rented sector. Then we'll talk a little bit about the quality. Then we'll talk about affordability and accessibility. So I'm giving you a real context setting of what's happening in the private rented sector right now. And then you'll hear from Fran, who will be able to answer all of your questions about tenants' rights and the real nitty gritty um, of all of you who are actually uh, tenants living in the, in the private rented sector. So with house prices remaining out of reach and a lack of access to social housing, which I'm sure you will have all heard about in the news, private renting is increasingly becoming the only route for people to find a permanent place to call home. The private rented sector has grown significantly with the number of people aged 50 and over living in, that, in this sector doubling since 2001. So what you can see in this graph on this slide is that whilst there has been some growth in the number of people over 50 who own their own home, it's the private rented sector that's seen this huge growth. And actually all of the trends suggest that 
this is going to increase. And so some of the issues that we're talking about today, some of the issues in the solutions, there's going to be a growing number of old in, older people who are going to face the challenges and have the opportunities. So why is some of this a bit of an issue? As, as you will be feeling and know, there are a number of key challenges for older private renters, and these are issues about lack of security, affordability, quality of housing and accessibility, but also that the risk of living in, in um a poor quality and a private rented sector home which isn't fit for purpose is higher amongst certain groups so for example people aged over 50 who are from black asian and minority ethnic backgrounds are more likely to be living in one of those homes than white british which means that we have an, an unfair and unequal risk of living in insecure housing um, and some of the information that we'll be talking about is that uh, these are groups who are more likely to be spending most of their income, monthly income on housing costs. And these are groups of people who are also more likely to be living in what's called housing deprivation, which was something that was measured in the last census, which is about people who were living without central heating or in a shared space or homes that are overcrowded. So... It's a big issue, and that leads us nicely on to be talking about the quality of homes. So in England, we have something called the Decent Home Standard, which is a government scheme that sets out the minimum standard for homes. And in, and in brief, what that means is that these are homes that must be in a reasonable state of repair. They need to have access to reasonably modern facilities, and they need to be warm because, uh, believe it or not, there are homes out there that literally cannot be heated to uh, a suitable or comfortable temperature. So that means that there are there are millions of people actually um, that are living across all uh, homeowners and private renters who are living in homes that are, are, are potentially falling apart, they've got hazards in them, they are not decent and not, and not of good enough quality. Of these types of homes, the highest proportion are in the private rented sector. And older people living in these sorts of poor quality homes, it is affecting their health and well-being. And I'm sure to, to lots of you, this is unsurprising, but damp and mould is, is really common in the private rented sector. And there's something about almost a quarter, almost 25% of homes in the private rented sector don't meet this, um, don't meet this decency standard. Uh, there's um something some some stats that are that we've collected that were that demonstrate that about just under 40 percent of renters aged 50 to 69 and a third of those aged 70 and over reported that their homes have got condensation damp or mold which is a huge proportion isn't it and for many some of these living in some of these dangerous homes will be life limiting and and for a small number it does actually kill them so living in a cold home for example means that you have higher chances of having a, a heart attack or a stroke. That's what uh, being cold has these physiological effects on bodies. Um, and, you know, if, if you're ever talking to somebody who is a decision maker at national level, you can also tell them <laughs> that these are the sorts of homes that also have an impact on um, the economy, productivity, people's, people's ability to work, children's ability to go to school in good health, um, space to do their homework, etc., and it also increases the amount of GP appointments and, and people going into requiring social care. So it's a really, really big issue. If we think then about the financial element of this, and again, this is something that's really covered in the news, isn't it, about how much rents have gone up and how difficult it is in some parts of the country for people to find a property that suits their needs that also doesn't uh, cost them too much money. Um, so... One of the, the kind of most difficult stats that we've, we've come across is that and um, for some groups of older renters, they will be spending about half of their monthly income on rent. And this means that for those people, their disposable income, which is the money that you have left over after you've paid your bills, is increasingly non-existent. And people are having to make really difficult decisions about how they live their lives. And um, what's on the screen here is on the bottom half of the screen are some stats from... Uh, that were taken during the cost of living crisis that asked people about how they're spending their money. And it demonstrates that three in five, so this is just over half of private renters aged um, 
1569, during that time reduced the, the use of their cooker or their oven. All, nearly half of people in the private and social rented sectors reduced the amount of money they spent on food. And a similar proportion of people in both private and social rented sectors reduced the number of bars or showers taken in an effort to make sure that they could pay all of their bills at the end of the month. What's really striking, um, but that people don't often know, is that a fifth of all pension age, pension age adults are living in relative poverty, and the highest rates of those are amongst those who rent their own home, which is just a, a really shocking stat. Um, and actually, uh, some of Fran's colleagues at Independent Age have done some really excellent research on um, on the private rented sector and the experiences and the financial insecurity of people living there. Um, so I'll just give a couple of stats and um, but do uh, I we can put some links in the chat to some of the other work that Fran's colleagues have done. Uh, but that 15% of renters aged 65 and over in England have less than £100 per month after paying rent. And almost a third of people in this age group have £200 or less. It's also a significant gender divide, with one in five women reporting to have less than £100 in comparison to men, uh, where the rate is lower. So higher rents ultimately are leaving older renters in poverty. And this is combined with additional factors such as housing and security in the private rented sector, some of which I'm sure Fran will cover in terms of some of the rights to support people um, if they do feel or are at risk of uh, their home being taken away from them. So another particular issue that affects older renters is about accessibility. And there's a real chronic shortage of accessible homes in the UK. And this really is across all different types of homes, be that a renter or a homeowner um, and research carried out by the Equality and Human Rights Commission found that one in three disabled people living in the private rented sector lived in an unsuitable house. It was a, a house unsuitable for disabled people yeah. um, and there is a, a widespread knowledge out there that um, many private landlords are reluctant to allow adaptations. Now the counter to that from the organisation that represents landlords says that, well, actually, some of this is quite a complicated process and it's, it's difficult to disagree with that. But equally, if you are somebody who needs those adaptations, um, there's not much choice out there in terms of alternatives if your landlord really doesn't want to. So um, maybe that will be something that gets discussed later. But the Disabled Facilities Grant is a grant provided to some people by a local authority to help adapt the home. Um, and th there are complications with landlords and it's also can be quite a long process in terms of um, getting the application process through uh, the local authority. So in some ways it can be great, but it's also uh, quite challenging. Now, Nazia was um, keen to end on a bit of a positive note <laughs> um, after, after laying the ground of what is quite a, a challenging really um, context just to outline some of the stuff that aging's better aging better is trying to do and this is to demonstrate the kind of breadth of organization so we have set up what we call the safe homes now campaign and we are working with other big names in the charity sector to try to get the government to take uh, more concerted action to support better quality housing for renters and for homeowners and so we really hope that that will um uh, come to fruition and that we will get some some luck with that and that's it really from me I will I'm very happy to answer any questions people have got I will start my video again yeah that's it brilliant thank you so much Holly um so someone left a comment earlier that I was speaking too quickly so I can only apologize everyone um I'll try and slow down um thank you so much so Holly has to rush off relatively soon um, but she just has some time for people to uh, send some questions over around her presentation or, or questions that might be uh, relevant to her. Uh, someone has left a question in the Q&A, but I think it's quite a, a, a broad question, um, which I'm wondering if we should save for the end. Uh, but equally, if no one else has any, then I'll ask it now, shall I? So I'll give people 
a few seconds. Why don't I just, why don't I say it? Why don't I read it out? And then we can decide. Um, so someone has asked, they've said, uh, I'm in my 60s, I'm renting privately. Um, and I'm, uh, this is how they describe themselves, they describe themselves as, as poor and disabled. Uh, my choice going, my choices going forward are either arms houses, uh, where, I'm, where I'm only a licensee, not a tenant, or sheltered housing, which I prefer. Can you pass on any strategies for me to transition from my current situation to sheltered housing? I am mobility challenge and live in a basement flat. Thank you. And feel free to jump in, Fran, as well, to that question if you feel. Well, actually, Fran may well be better placed than me. I think so. Our um, our advice usually is to start with the local authority. So, depending on where you live, uh, most a lot of local authorities will have teams that help with moving options. So, these are hopefully teams that understand what's available locally and can pass on the right sorts of contacts and give you some advice on eligibility for different types and. A rough idea of um, how much things cost. Um, so that would be my suggestion on um, the first first choice. But Fran, I don't know if you've got other, if you normally suggest other things. Um, no, I would agree. I think um, your first point of call would usually be your local council or housing association. Um, in most areas, uh, the local council will run a waiting list for people looking for sheltered accommodation. Um, and different councils have different rules on who's eligible. Um, for example, your minimum, minimum age threshold might vary, or you might be given certain priority, additional priority on that waiting list if you have a particular need. So um, you have mentioned that, oh, sorry. You have mentioned that you're, um, you've got mobility challenges and that you're disabled. Um, so that may, for some local councils, um, give you some priority. Um, Alternatively, if, if you feel like you need a bit of extra support with contacting your local council or you've tried already and, and you haven't had the answer that you're looking for, um, I can definitely recommend calling our independent age helpline. They can book you an appointment with one of our specialist housing advisors um, and they can provide you a bit of additional support. Um, when I put my presentation on the screen, I'll have all the contact details for that and hopefully Generation Rent will be able to send that to you afterwards as well. So I hope that's given you a little bit um, of information and hopefully, um, yeah, something that you can move forward with. Brilliant. Thank you. Thanks, both. Um, well, I haven't been any extra questions. I'll just, I'm just checking the chat and the Q&A and there doesn't appear to be. So uh, I believe in that case, and sorry, yes, as, as Fred said, we will be sending around an email after this. So uh, we'll, we'll definitely put all as many uh, resources and, and everything that's mentioned over the course of the webinar around to people and you'll get an email. Um, but yeah, I th Holly, you are absolutely free to go if you'd like to head off and enjoy your Friday evening. Thank you. Thanks so much. And I'm sorry to be dashing off, but the longer I say, the more chance there are of various children running into screen, which is not <laughs> what this is about. So um, thank you very much. And also very happy to answer any um, any questions or chat and you can find all my details online. So yeah, thank you very much. Good okay, bye. Thank you, Holly. Have a good one. Alrighty, okay, so um, we'll move on to our second speaker, which is Fran. Fran, go for it. Okay, thank you very much. Um, whilst I wait for my screen sharing to become available, I will just introduce myself. Um, so hello, everybody. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, my name is Fran. I am the information and advice trainer at Independent Age. Um, Sorry, uh, it says that screen sharing is disabled for me. So um, would you be able to make me co-host temporarily so that I can share the presentation? Or if I did tech support, I'm sure. <laughs> no problem. Um, <laughs> whilst we wait for that to happen, I'll just tell you a little bit about Independent Age because you may or may not have heard of us as a charity. So Independent Age is a national charity and we believe that whatever happens as you get older, we all want to remain independent and live life on our own terms. So at Independent Age, we offer a strong campaigning voice as well as free, clear and impartial advice on the issues that matter to you. And those are things like care and support, money and benefits, health and mobility. Perfect. It looks like I can 
share with you now. Hopefully that's come up on the screen. Yeah, we can see. Perfect, brilliant, then I will get started. So as I mentioned, we do have a free helpline. Um, that is open Monday to Friday, 8.30 a.m. to, to 5.30 p.m. You can also email us for advice. Um, and when you call the helpline, um, they can offer you some advice there and then, but you can also be booked in for an appointment with a specialist advisor. You can also um, find lots of guides and fact sheets on our website. You can download digital copies of these and you can also request to have these posted to you. So today I'm going to look at a couple of different topics. The first thing I'll talk about is some entitlements that you might be eligible for. I'll talk briefly about pension credit, housing benefit and some council tax discounts. I'll also mention some of our resources and helpful guides. And finally, I'll just give you a very short overview of the renter's rights bill that's currently moving through Parliament and what you need to know what might affect you in this bill. So first off, what is pension credit? Uh, if you don't know, it's extra money from the government to top up your pension income. It can also act as a passport to other entitlements, including help with your housing costs and council tax, help with NHS costs, including free dental treatment and travel costs for NHS treatments, vouchers towards glasses or contact lenses, and cold weather payments. And when you're 75 or over, you can also apply for a free TV license if you receive pension credit. So who is eligible for it? You can get pension credit if you are over state pension age and if your income is less than £218.15 a week if you're a single person or less than £332.95 a week if you're a couple who are both over state pension age. Now, these are the 2024 to 2025 standard amounts that the government has set. However, you might still qualify if you have a higher income than that and you're also a carer, disabled or have certain housing costs. Um, if you're in a couple and only one of you is over state pension age, you need to check that you're eligible for universal credit instead of pension credit. If you think that might affect you, if you're in a mixed age couple, then you can go ahead and call our helpline and get some advice there. So receiving pension credit doesn't affect the other benefits that you get, and it might actually increase the amount that you receive of other benefits or entitlements. You can still get pension credit if you have savings, but if you do have savings and investments over £10,000, it will reduce the amount that you can get. So your savings level gets translated into a weekly amount. And for every £500 that you have over £10,000, it's assumed that you have an extra one pound of weekly income. And the amount that you get is worked out by taking your income away from the minimum amount that the government says you need to live on. And the minimum amount isn't the same for everyone. So, for example, if you are a carer or you have something called underlying entitlement to carer's allowance, um, an additional amount is added to the amount that um, the government feels you need to live on. So how do you claim pension credit? There are a few different ways to claim it. The quickest are online or on the phone, but you can apply um, via post with a paper form. We really recommend that you use online or phone if you can, um, just because there can be delays with the paper form. You can also contact um, a local voluntary organization such as Citizens Advice, or you can ask someone at the pension service to request a paper form for you. And you can also call us at Independent Age and we can arrange for a paper form for you. Before you make a claim, just make sure that you have a note of some of these things, or all of these things rather. Um, you'll need to know your income, any savings and investments and other capital. You'll need your national insurance number, your bank details, 
your housing costs, such as mortgage interest, service charges, or ground rent, and the same details for your partner if you have one. Now, you can apply for pension credit up to four months before you reach state pension age, and you can apply after you reach state pension age. It can also be backdated for up to three months, provided that you qualified for it during that period. So you may have heard um, in the news recently about the winter fuel payment um, and needing to be um, in receipt of an eligible benefit or entitlement in order to receive that. Pension credit is one of those entitlements. Um, the deadline for that was 21st of September. However, because it can be backdated up to three months, if you um, claim pension credit and are awarded it before the 21st of December, that can be backdated to make you eligible for this year. Okay, so moving on, we're gonna look next at housing benefit. So housing benefit is money to help you pay for all or part of your rent if you're on a low income. So to claim it, you need to be on a low income and you need to have reached state pension age, or you need to be living in supported, sheltered, or temporary accommodation. If you live with a partner, only one of you needs to claim, and you can claim if you've both reached state pension age. Um, even if you don't qualify for things like pension credit, housing benefit and council tax have different eligibility criteria in their own right. So it's worth checking if you're entitled to housing benefit or a council tax reduction, even if you don't um, qualify for pension credit. And again, I'm gonna sound like a broken record here, but it's always worth calling our helpline to find out. So how much could you get? The amount of um, housing benefit you get will depend on your circumstances. So the council will work out your eligible rent, and that's what you actually pay for rent plus any service charges. What it doesn't cover are things that are sometimes included in rent, um, like fuel costs or council tax. So how much you get depends on a few things. It depends on your household income, any benefits or entitlements you receive, the amount of rent that you pay, whether your council, housing association or a private tenant, where you live, who you live with, and how many rooms you have. If you're a private tenant, the maximum housing benefit you can get is called the local housing allowance. And those, rents, uh, those rates are set by the valuation office agency. <clears throat> okay, how do we claim housing benefit? So housing benefit gets paid by your local council and you'll need to contact them to apply. So if you need to find out the contact details for your local council, you can do that quite easily online at gov.uk slash find local council. And just once again, these are some of the things that you might need when applying. So it's just worth having these things handy or written down before you apply. This will include a proof of identity, national insurance number, details of your income and any information about your rent. Okay, finally, I'm gonna have a quick look at council tax reductions. So you might qualify um, for a council tax reduction if you have no or low income. If you get pension credit, you could be entitled to a reduction up to the full amount. Um, in some cases, that's a 100% reduction. If you don't get, pen get pension credit, the council will look at your income and capital and work out whether you qualify. So um, some people are disregarded from council tax. So if you live with someone who is disregarded, you're treated as living alone and you're therefore eligible for a discount. So if you live on your own or if you live with a full-time student, if you live with someone who has a, a severe mental impairment, that includes things like Alzheimer's and dementia. And if you live with a living carer or with a long-term hospital patient. You may also pay less council tax under the disabled band reduction scheme if anyone living with you is substantially and permanently disabled. 
So if you qualify for that, your council tax gets reduced to the bands that's below yours. So for example, if your council tax band is currently band C, it will be reduced to B. If it's at B, it will become A. And if you're already on the lowest council tax band, it gets reduced by a further 17%. Finally, I'm just gonna talk to you very briefly about the renters' rights bill that's moving through parliament at the moment. So alongside our helpline, Independent Age also has a dedicated policy team. That team listen to older people, determine what policy changes could improve their lives, and then they think of creative ways to persuade the government and people in charge to act and make life better for people as they age. So I'm going to just summarize some of the changes proposed in, a recent, in the recent renters' rights bill um, and our policy team's thoughts on them. If this bill is passed, we expect these changes will come into effect sometime next year. So the first one that we think is um, that may be of interest to you is an end to Section 21 evictions. Um, you might also have heard this referred to as a no fault eviction. We think this is really good. Um, we have evidence that this is a major cause of stress for older renters, um, particularly those who are afraid to ask for improvements or contest things they're unhappy with for, out of fear of a retaliatory eviction. The notice period for no fault evictions has been increased to two months. So currently, if you're served with a Section 21 notice or a no fault eviction, um, that gives you two months notice. This bill proposes that that increases to four months. So we also think that's very good. Uh, the bill also proposes an end to no DSS bans. That's Department of Social Security. And in this context, um, that would be things like housing benefit or universal credit. Um, and it would make discrimination against people who receive those entitlements illegal. This is good, um, but we don't have we don't think it goes quite far enough to protect older renters. Um, landlords will no longer be able to refuse viewings or offers, but they can still discriminate on the basis of income. And we're aware of older people who would still fail financial checks because they might have a low fixed income, for example, receiving a pension, but no benefits. Landlords now need to get well, will, will need to give two months notice for in-tenancy rent increases. We also think this is very good. Um, it will give tenants more time to either work out if they can afford the new rent or not um, and give notice if they want to leave. There's going to be a simpler process for challenging rent levels at tribunal. And um, at tribunal, they will no longer be able to increase the proposed rent, only keep it the same or decrease it, which means that tenants could go to tribunal without fear that the rent might go up further. And finally, um, the bill proposes an introduction of the decent home standards to the private rented sector. We think this is good in principle, we're waiting for a few more details on it though. Um, and this is an issue because older people in particular are affected by low quality homes in the private rented sector. So overall, we think there's a lot of really, really positive stuff in the renter's rights bill. Um, it's just had its second reading, I think this week, and hopefully these new rules will come into effect next year and offer a bit more protection for those in the private rented sector. So thank you very much for listening. I appreciate that was quite a whistle-stop tour um, and a lot of information to throw at you all at once. So once again, um, if you have a particular situation that you'd really like to get one-to-one -one personal advice on, I really recommend calling our helpline. Once again, that's open Monday to Friday, 8.30 a.m. to, to 5.30 p.m. It's free. And what they can do is they can book an appointment for you with one of our trained specialist advisors who can um, support you to claim benefits or um, find suitable housing. Okay.